everybody, welcome to the second part of the final 10th anniversary video. Um, the machine gun guitar. In the other video we are talking about how I created this. I'm not going to go into why I'm doing all these 10th anniversary videos because I've said it enough in each of the videos. Uh, if you're watching this, you've probably seen the first video and others. So anyways, let's just jump right back into the, uh, the story about this guitar. So in the other video I said that... Uh, uh, I'd had a problem with the balancing of the guitar. So I tried to work out some ideas and like I said I gave up and it became a wall hanger. Uh, it wasn't until years later uh, that I was working in a place and I had a friend there that was a welder. So I, I rigged up this thing and I had him weld it together. And his welding job was great uh, but my design was kind of, it, it looked like hell really. But it screwed onto the back of the guitar, this big plate, and then it had a, a piece of metal that came out. Because I knew that how to balance this better, I had to get the guitar strap out forward. Because there's no horn on this guitar to get out forward because the strap was back here. Which really, being that the body was light and the strap holder was back here, it, it made it even worse. The idea worked, but I hated the look of the thing. This this horrible ugly thing I made out of metal. Like I said the welding job was fine but it didn't it didn't look very good and I took it off and back onto the wall it went. It wasn't until 2003. Uh, I was kind of working on my own little album at the time with a four track recorder and a, and a digital drum machine and all kinds of stuff and I was really heavily into this project and I was using my friend uh, my <laughs> I was using my West Tone. But Something happened to that guitar, and that's before I started getting back into guitar building. I probably would have been able to figure it out now. But at the time, uh, the pickup started humming. No matter what I did, there was this horrible humming sound, and I would try to take it apart, and look at things. I thought maybe a wire came loose, it was a grounding issue. Everything seemed fine. Um, I did everything to that. I even dipped the pickups in wax, but all I really did was I ended up uh, destroying the pickup because I thought, well, I, I tried to rewind one. I, <laughs> I took off all the copper wire and tried to rewind it by hand. It was a mess. Uh, it didn't sound any better. I, you know, so I gave up on it. I was going to buy another guitar. And this was before, like I said, I was making guitars. So I was kind of, I didn't want to go out and buy another guitar. I really didn't want to spend the money at the time. I wanted to make my West Tone work. I was disappointed that it wasn't working. I've been playing that guitar for a long time. I learned everything I knew basically on that guitar. But then I looked at this thing hanging on the wall and I knew that it worked. That it, but the only problem was it was uncomfortable to play. So I thought, if I can solve that problem, I have a workable guitar. Something that I really do want to play. Um, I came up with this idea. Uh, looks like a thing, the turnbuckle on the uh, shark guitar. It is, it's, you know, another Eddie, Eddie Van Halen influence. Um, it works this way that I can screw it to the body, secure it nice and tight, um, and this thing's adjustable. It could give, you know, give me a lot of space outward where it would help balance. But the other thing I did, and a really significant part, is something that has really affected how I build guitars now, and I'll explain the whole thing. I had this uh, piece of quarter inch flat bar hanging around the house and I thought, you know, if I screw that to the back of the body, you're not going to be able to see it, but it'll add weight. So not only have I brought the guitar strap forward, but I can handle the look of this, um, but with the, a little extra weight to the body, it might work. So I did that, started to play it, and it worked beautiful. I could play it, it was balanced nice. And I was happy. You can't sit down with it, but you can play it standing up. And I was fine with it. But as I started to play it, um, because it was 14 years old and hanging on the wall, um, it had some some issues with the, the volume pot and with the switch, which uh, I had wired to cut out the pickup so that, you know, you could like strum a chord and then cut it in and out. The wiring job that I did 14 years prior was, um, you know, it wasn't a great job to begin with and uh, it was deteriorating, so wires were loose and things like that. So that's when I decided to uh, take it all apart, 
uh, go through everything and um, I bought an, a Fender pot and uh, a proper guitar switch. I'm not sure if I bought a new input. No put <laughs> or not. Uh, same pickup, all the parts, the other parts are the same. I did replace these years before, but I kept the, uh, the tuners. I had these pieces of brass that I had bent and screwed onto the headstock to redirect the strings. Um, because if I didn't, the string would actually hit the, uh, the, uh, the post. So I knew that's not going to work too well. Um, but I didn't like the look of them. They were very chintzy. They weren't, I, I just, they were bent into shape and they weren't really that, that nice looking. So um, I was in Home Depot and I saw these things. They, they'll work as, uh, they'll direct the string around, it's nice and round and soft, so it's not going to be a sharp edge. And uh, they kind of look like a bullet. Get a close up of that. I made a pickup ring. This is three layers of ABS plastic that I had just kicking around. Uh, I glued it together with crazy glue and clamped it really quick and, uh, and then cut it out and shaped it. Uh, so this is a solid piece on there. And then I put these gigantic screws on. Uh, before that it was just open, just a raw, rough, you know, I was trying to give it a raw, rough look, kind of a, a Eddie Van Halen 5150 guitar kind of thing. I was always heavily influenced by Eddie Van Halen, so, uh, but I thought I would neaten it up a little bit. Oh, actually, I was gonna, this is uh, something that I had made. I'll get a close up picture of it. This is actually uh, the original, I had that on the back, but I had to take it off and I put that uh, steel bar on <laughs> a little thing. Uh, but I found that the other day and I was like, wow, I thought I'd thrown it away. So it's a nice little keepsake for this. So I added the, uh, the magazine. No, the, uh, that's the magazine. This is the, uh, I guess like the trigger handle, uh, which was always missing. I saw a picture of the machine gun. I was like, I'm missing that. So I decided to add this while I was re uh, rebuilding it, overhauling it. Uh, I never did finish it. Uh, although I, I cut it out of uh, plywood <laughs> and used car primer again to match the rest and I was going to paint it but um, I kind of I don't want to I don't want to wreck anything I almost repainted this guitar and I would have been so disappointed if I had because it has all the character on it that it, that it had from day one even the little finger you know you can see my little fingerprint where I, I wipe the uh, that paint drip off you know I'm glad that all that stuff is there because this is a very sentimental guitar to me so I'm glad I didn't repaint it so that's why I'm pretty much leaving it as is I'm not changing anything I'll just repair it if something breaks uh, or you know needs repairing like a, a wire that comes loose or whatever a volume pot that might go bad I mean I don't play it a lot that much anymore um, unfortunately it's kind of back on the wall but proudly, proudly back on the wall. Um, once I put this thing together and started playing it, there was a huge change in sound. And it wasn't just the fact that I had rewired it and all the connections were solid. There was an extra quality of sound that was coming through, a rich quality. I'd hit a harmonic and it would just ring through nice and sharp. And I started to wonder just how much the steel bar contributed to that because this is bolted right through the body. It added so much stability and mass that it didn't have before and I know mass equals tone. So over the years I've experimented whenever I can with this and I've done it to uh, the shark guitar. I don't, I've never said that before and even in the 10th anniversary video I forgot to point out the fact that it has a steel bar in the back. I dug a little trench out, I, I routed a space for that bar uh, so it sits nice and flush and I, I put body filler over it and smoothed it out and painted over it. You can't even see it. You can't eat, but now you can a little bit. I knew you would, but um, the reason I did that was because Eddie always said that he destroyed the sound when he cut that chunk out. So I didn't want to destroy the sound of the guitar and I thought what a great opportunity. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's a great sounding guitar. I love that guitar. It sounds fantastic. And again, I kind of contributed to that steel bar being there. Um, and I've done it to other guitars. And 
I need one day to take a guitar and do like a bunch of sound tests and then put the steel bars in and do the sound test again to really get a good measure of whether or not or how these steel bars influence the sound. But every guitar that I've done it to sounds great. And uh, it's something that I'm working on right now. The, uh, the Crush guitar behind me, I've decided to go with all brass steel bar or all brass bars in that and add in quite a few chunks of brass to that to see what happens and uh, I'm working on a bass the first time I put steel bars in a bass and it's a super bass so uh, it's it's you know it's part of an experimental thing that I've been working on ever since 2003 when I discovered that it made a difference in the sound of this guitar so uh, like I say this is not just the first guitar that I've made but it actually helps steer me I guess into where I am now so I was really glad that it all came together. I figured out my balancing problem after like 14 years. Uh, it sounded great. I wrote a couple. Of, I wrote a bunch of songs with this guitar and recorded them. And uh, it's really neat to have those recordings that, and to hear that guitar. And uh, the thing is, you know, after that, uh, you know, I kind of put it away. But I started building other guitars. And after I put the video up on YouTube, um, it, it got a lot of interest again. And it got a lot of comments, and especially about the name, The Peace. A lot of people took offense to that, that I was trying to say something that guns uh, bring peace. And that's not what I was trying to say at all. Uh, that's not why I called it The Peace. It was a tongue-in-cheek sort of joke. It was a twist of words. It was um, at the time in 1986 when I told people what the name was, everybody would chuckle and laugh and go, oh, that's kind of funny. It's not violent anyway. It's, it's an instrument to make music. And I think that's, you know, that's where the art element comes into this. And I've always found that interesting. Um, but people do have unusual comments. And I think the video's got uh, close to 200 comments. A lot <laughs> you know, varied comments, people like it, people hate it, people, you know, the usual YouTube stuff, but it's it's generated a lot of views for my channel, and it's uh, it's always interesting to hear what people have to say about it. Uh, I'm proud of it, I love it, uh, I'm glad that I built it, and, uh, you know, I will never get rid of it or take it apart or sell it or whatever else, you know. Anyways, this guitar has been a very big significant part of my life and my guitar building um, life. So uh, I hope you enjoyed listening to me ramble on about this guitar that I made 31 years ago. I found it, it found it to be an interesting story. And uh, finally I have it documented now and uh, I'll have it linked to the, uh, the original video so people can watch this and be amazed. <laughs> but, so anyways, uh, thanks for watching this. Thanks for watching the, all the 10 anniversary videos that you have. Uh, check out my other videos uh, on my channel and check out uh, my uh, Facebook page and my Instagram page and Twitter. Uh, all Johnny B guitars. Don't forget to subscribe. I have stuff coming up all the time. I have a lot of cool guitars that I'm always working on or doing something guitar related. And uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. So thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.